Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel to another collection of fascinating, amazing historical photos. I'm going to start off with this first one. This is a still photo of the Second World War pinup girls from the 1941 movie You're in the Army Now. This is a legend and the lady in the center is Jane Wyman, Ronald Reagan's first wife for 10 years. This is, photo is iconic for two important reasons. The first one is because this was used as a marketing scheme to attract men in the army so that they could go to the army and maybe eventually meet beautiful women in the army. The second one is the way they use the clothing and it just doesn't make any sense because you know women would not wear this clothing especially the woman behind uh, would not wear this clothing because it's just too short and just does not make any sense but it doesn't matter it is for marketing purposes. Now this one guys is a completely hilarious one. We have a classic milkman which makes a delivery to a grammar school in London 1939 this one is especially funny because milkmen were very famous back in the day for always delivering the milk under any given circumstance and this is in hot, in cold, against all odds, against dogs, what well, it doesn't matter effectively they were the people who would always try to deliver their product to the people who were expecting them so this is again kudos to these wonderful legendary people who now don't exist anymore because now you can just go and buy your own milk in the supermarket whenever you want. Here we have guys the USS uh, Ticonderoga approaches the Apollo 17 capsule, marking the end of the last manned lunar mission, December 19, 1972. Now there's a lot of debate about the lunar landing because as you guys know there's a lot of skepticism around this and this could be a fake, this could be a fake, this could just be a way of them advertising their power against the Russians because of the Cold War, so the lunar missions could all be a hoax. However, as you all know, this sort of stuff you cannot find for true or not because they actually deleted the original tapes from NASA and the reason for that deletion is completely unknown to us. Architects Rolf Fontaina and John Antonides, Wallace K. Harrison and others discussing the design of United Nations Headquarters Building New York 1947. The United Nations Headquarters, guys, this was when it was established and this is a place, as you all know, where the elites and also very important families gather to control the world and establish the future of humanity in many, many ways. This one is a portrait of a Romanian soldier, Army of the Socialist Republic of Romania during the Ceausescu, I would say, leadership 1970s. Now this photo here is also really interesting because it shows a typical look of the soldier which was very typical to a Russian uh, kind of like USSR picture as you can imagine it's very very similar however this is interesting here is that these people were doing these things just towards the end of the actual leadership of the USSR and Ceausescu steadily gradually moved away from the USSR way of doing things and it was more the Romanian way of doing things which was quite different from the actual USSR. The first rocket launch from Cape Cavernal 1950 and this was the start of a very big frenzy of people wanting to go and people were actually paying to see rockets and explosions being done. Nuclear explosions, atomic explosions, even rockets, people would go and pay to watch these things or try to get a view from a distance because it was pretty much a show and this was the kind of the start of it, the early 1950s. This photo is very smart because these are two Maltese women talking Malta in circa 1950 and the reason why they are wearing that cover is to protect themselves from the scorching sun which is very intelligent so if you ask me this is really smart. Now this is in black and white photo so obviously the, the clothing could have certain different colors doesn't necessarily have to be completely black we don't know what was it exactly however this guys is really cool because it shows the ingenuity of the people in the area are trying to avoid as much as possible the scorching sun during the months of the summer. Here we have the Grand Prix Angola Luanda Angola 1960. Now the cars guys they're very different from today's cars however I just love the classic look of these cars they're just iconic and for me to be honest personally I like these cars more than current modern cars just because of their design with so much more I would say forward thinking and just 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 unique in many ways. 
Now this one is a very very imposing photo. These are the carrier planes fly over the USS Missouri and the USS Detroit during the Japanese surrender ceremonies September the 2nd 1945. It was pretty much a display of power to the Japanese of total dominance that the American force is completely dominating Japan and this was exactly that. It was just pretty much I would say flexing it. The Americans were just flexing their power against the Japanese telling them that yes you have lost the war so now you are our dog pretty much. Now this one guys, this is Targa, the elephant disembarks from the Ringling Bros, Barnum and Bailey train in the Bronx, April the 1st 1963. This one is a classic one because this elephant uh, played in many plays and obviously in the circus and stuff. So this guy is, is, I would say, a really cool photo, especially with the kids next to the elephant. It's just a unique photo. I would say it's very funny and at the same time it's quite imposing. A massive gigantic elephant just comes out just casually from a train. Now this photo is more common than you would think. This is for example Los Angeles County Jail Matron Vada Sullivan taking care of an inmate's baby sleeping in a dresser drawer 1933. This is very common, not even in kind of like uh, jails, but even in police stations, many people working for the police or for the jail were taking care of babies who were either abandoned or they were part of the inmates and they had to take care of them temporarily for like a couple of days or a week or two or something until they could take them somewhere where they could be taken to a uh, place um, which is more stable. So yeah, this guy is, is quite shocking, but that was something that they did very I would say frequently back in the 1920s, 30s and also potentially early 40s. Now here we have a samurai full-fledged in his full armor and his retainers wearing male armor and armed with uh, Ma Naginata 1870. This guy is really really exciting because this shows the proper wearing of a samurai and also his retainers which are pretty much he's like foot soldiers like who are effectively working for the samurai kind of like being their assistants if you want to call it like that and of course also protecting their lord because samurais were people who were really I would say respected back in the day in Japan in the 17, 18 and 19th century. A native of Bafumbria, Uganda, with banana leaf clothing, 1911. I am not joking, this is exactly the clothing that they were wearing back in the day in this very, very interesting tribe. Now this photo guys is iconic, 1970s, 1980s pretty much, skateboarding at the Viper Bowl in Hollywood, pure, literally vintage guys. Liters and liters and gallons of confiscated liquor pour out of the upper window of a three-story storefront in Detroit during the Prohibition 1929. That was just crazy. Now just imagine how stinky and smelly and sticky that place must have been after they poured so many liters on the street. Just absolutely insanity. I don't know why I did this. I mean, you have to be insane. If you just want to get rid of it and, you know, limit it or prohibit, just get rid of it in a smart way, not just pour it over the window and it gets all smelly and sneak sticky, literally in the whole neighborhood. Here we have a very nice first class sleeping car train, 1929. I mean, to be honest, back in the day, it was not that bad. Look at this and you can tell that this was actually pretty well done. Now this one is a funny one, that's why I wanted to include this in this collection. This is a young wombat named Wimpy having a meal on the lap of his trainer who runs a firm supplying animals for TV shows. He is the freaking first wombat to ever make a video. Australia 1950s. Now that is unique. This guy is literally Gargoyle, we don't know. The first ever wombat to actually show on TV. Here we have an aerial view of a village of Aberfan following a landslide from a nearby spool tip which killed very 116 children and 28 adults. The view from the sky is just absolutely shocking. Just imagine that massive landslide which just caused so much damage and it was completely unexpected. That's why living nearby mountains, this was in 1966, is a danger in itself. 37 years ago, Robin Williams as a Denver Broncos cheerleader, 1975. He was just absolutely hilarious in this clothing. Now, this is not Venice, okay, this is not uh, in Italy, this guys is 
3rd Street, Portland, Oregon, USA between Washington and Burnside during the Willamette River Flood in June 1894. This is crazy. Look at that. I mean, that is just insane, guys. Look how, look how flat this is. And people just were in boats because the buildings were maybe like 20% like completely flooded or more. 20-30% depends. It's just insane and that happened for a couple of days that is insane Henry Ford and Barney Oldfield first man to drive ever a car at 60 miles per hour or in 96 kilometers per hour and on a circular track between 1903 and 1902 so these guys were ahead of the game and they first made the car which is super fast to be honest back in the day that was just the revolution to have a car literally going almost at 100 kilometers per hour i'm not sure what safety belt he was wearing if any at all but this guy is a very big accomplishment Maori soldiers of New Zealand 28 uh, Battalion performing the traditional Hakka war cry in Egypt 1941. This was a cry dance, war dance effectively, which would pump them up and get ready to fight against the invasion. Of course, this guy is a very iconic photo and the faces of these warriors just says everything. They are very pumped and very motivated. Astronaut Dale Gardner holds up a for sale sign after recovering two broken satellites, the Palapa B-2 and the Westar 6 during the Space Shuttle Discovery mission STS-51-A, 14th of November 1941. Yes, it is for sale, but basically nobody's gonna buy them because they were completely and utterly broken. Now this one is a very interesting one. Back in the day, animals were actually being used as part of medical therapy for children, mostly, because it would calm them down, relax them, give them a sense of relief, and animals are really good at distracting children from the issue and just letting the doctor do his thing. So this guys was a therapy which was used a lot with different types of animals, not just ducks, could be also rabbits, could be also different types of animals, which were very docile and very friendly, and the kid was just completely distracted looking at the animals and not caring about the medical procedure or of the medical examination. Here we have a very beautiful photo of Monica Bellucci circa 1990s. Very, very beautiful. And since we're very close to the Halloween season, Alfred Hitchcock in a promotional photo for Halloween 1955. Photo is completely colorized and he just looks absolutely hilarious. This is Albert Einstein's office, just uh, as the Nobel Prize winning physicist left it taken a few hours just after his death. Princeton, New Jersey, April 1955. So guys, that's it for today's showcase of some of the most amazing and exciting images of the past, of our history and vintage photos, which I'm pretty sure many of them you have only seen them for the first time in your life today. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the channel guys, and I shall see you and talk to you in the next upload. Bye.